Hello everybody, this is Karim Kill the Cat, and welcome to your 21st Lua tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going over the debug library, which is the last of the Lua libraries. So after this, we'll just have one more tutorial to clean things up. I've said this before, but I'm saying it again. So we'll just have one more tutorial to finish things up. There are a few functions I haven't gone over, a few uh, small things that we have to cover. And then after that, it's on to the C library, which... I must say is the hardest part of Lua so get ready for that and it will take a quite a while so this series is nowhere near over so if you like it then don't worry okay so let's get started the first function we're going to go over is debug.getInfo and what this function does is you give it a function and it returns a bunch of information packed in table about that function so to show this, we'll create a function. So we'll say function, we can just call it f and end. And then we'll just make it print hello world, like usual. I think I'd be better at spelling it by now. And then since it's a table, we're gonna have to loop through the table to get all the information printed. So we'll say x equals debug dot gets info info and we pass in our function and then we say for k comma v in pairs and we give it the we give it x the table we say do and then print k v end just the usual generic for loop and then if we save this, and when we run it, we should get all the information that debug.getInfo can give about this function. So let's run. So we get a pretty big table here. We have it's n ups, which is the number of up values in the function. So remember in our closures tutorial, we talked about up values. This function has none. And what this is what kind of function it is. It can be a Lua function, it can be a C function, and if it's a C function then a lot of this information won't be there because Lua can't get a lot of information about the C functions. And then it can also be uh I forget what it'll give you if uh you have this, but it can also just be part of the main code block, so not in a function, so like all this code right here. Uh, it'll give you something else for that. I forget what it is, though. And then this is the actual function that we passed in. Just a copy of it. Last line defined is the last line in the code where the uh, function was defined. Oh, wrong window. Source is the complete path to the file that you're running. Current line, I'm not sure what this one is. I think it's been replaced by something else in Lua 5.2 because I can't find what it does. Name what? Uh, this is an empty string right now, but it just tells you a little more about the function. So I think if we were to close this and make it a local function, so we say local function, then if we run it again, no, we don't. Uh, if it can, then name what will give you some more information about the function, like say if it's local, global, or if, uh, if it's a method of a table or a field. But apparently it can't find it right now. I'm not sure why. And then line defined is the line where the function definition starts, so right here. Wrong window again. And short source is a shortened version of the path to the file. Uh, the path isn't very long for this example, so short source is just getting rid of the at in front of the e drive. But if you had a really long path, then it would cut that down a little. So that's what the debug.getInfo function does. So we can actually call debug.info another way. So instead of having this local function f, though actually I'm going to keep that there because we may use it again, we can give it a number parameter that uh, this is the stack level that you want to get the info from. So what the stack level is, it's basically like what, how directly are you calling the function. So if you say zero, it'll get information about debug.getInfo. And let's just say that this line is in a function. 
So if we put one, it would get info about the function that uh, we want that the debug.getInfo function is being called from. And if that was in a function, then uh, inputting two would get information about that function, and so on. So let's put in zero and not the new file thing. Don't want to save changes. Save this. And we can run it like this. So source equals C. What? It's a C function. Uh, it's the function ID. No up values. The short source is C. Uh, I'm not sure what that means for the file path. The name is get info, so it actually got the name correctly. Current lines negative one. Don't know what that means. Uh, name what is field. It's a field of debug, the uh, debug module. And it can't get the line defined and last line defined possibly because the function was defined in a different file. I'm not sure though. So now let's put this into our f function. Whoops. Put this here. We can get rid of this end. No we cannot. Tab this all in and get rid of the end here, or add another end, and then we can say we just call f. So if we run this, then, oh I forgot to change the parameter. So we'll change this to 1 so that it's getting information about the function f. So this should do roughly the same thing that the first call to the function was. So we get the source is the file location. What is Lua? That's correct, it's a Lua function. The function ID, uh, the number doesn't matter. Number of up value, zero, short source, file path. The name is F, so it actually got the name this time. The current line is two, because um, it's saying that we're currently running this line in the function. Oh, wrong window. And name what is local, because uh, it's a local function, I never got rid of that. Line defined, first line defined is 1, last line defined is 7. So it got the information much more accurately than it did when we called it, giving it the function instead of the stack level. So there's also another optional second parameter we can give to debug.getInfo. And this is pretty simple, it's just a string. And what you're doing is since this function isn't very efficient it takes quite a bit of effort for Lua to run it you can cut down the cost by saying that you only want certain fields from the table that gives you information about the function so if we give it a lowercase n it'll only get name and name what lowercase f only gets the function ID capital S gives you the, sh the source, short source what line defined and last line defined. Lowercase l gives you the current line that's being run, so two in this case. And capital L gives you the active lines, and u gives you the number of up values. So that's all for the getInfo function. So the next function we're going to go over is debug.getLocal. So Let's create some local variables in our function. So we'll say local x local y equals 10 and local z, oops, local z equals hello. And we can replace, actually we can just print this and we can get rid of this. So we can just get rid of all this and we'll say print debug dot get local that's a function right yep and just like the debug dot get info the first parameter we give is the stack level and remember zero will look for the variable in the debug dot get local function so if you want to get uh, a local variable from the function you're currently executing then you give it one as the first parameter and the second parameter is the name of the variable so we'll say x Oh wait, no, we don't. We give it the, uh, uh, before I tell you what you actually have to do, I'll explain how 
Lua orders variables in the variable stack. So when you create a local variable, it's put into a stack of all the variables currently in the function that are local. So we create x first, so that'll be given the index 1. Then we create y, so that is 2. And then z has index 3. So get used to that system because that's the way the entire C library works. So we don't give this a string that has the name. We'll say 1 because we want to get the local x variable. So we can save this. And actually, let's. No, this will work. So save this and run it. And we get x nil. So it got the local variable x and its value is nil. So it gave us the name and the value. So if we change the next to 2, it should say y and 10. I don't want to buy sublime text. y and 10. And then we can get z and hello. Got to save it. z and hello. So that's how the get local function. So the next function is very similar. It's called get up value. So we'll just change this to get up value. And I said up twice. And I'm not actually going to create an example for this because uh, it's pretty self explanatory, but basically the only difference between this and debug.getLocal is that instead of giving it a stack level, you give it the function. So we could say f. And you can probably guess that what debug.getUp value does is it searches a closure, which is our value f. And it searches for an up value at this index. The index system is the same as debug.getLocal. It's the order at which they were created. So it searches for up values by the index. And remember that up values are values that are saved by a lo or local values that are saved when they should be deleted because they're part of a closure. So that's debug.getUp value. So the final function we're going to go over is called debug dot set hook and what this function does is it allows you to set a function we'll use print in this example it allows you to set a function to be called whenever a certain event happens and those events are when a function is called you this you give the second parameter the string c whenever a new line is uh, run you give it the parameter l or whenever a function returns, you give it the parameter r. And then also you can give it a number, and that is whenever a certain number of commands happens. So like if you say 2, then you're saying uh, you want the hook to run every time, say, a variable is set, and then another variable is set, or just any two commands. So for the example, we're just going to use c. And we can get rid of this function here, but we'll actually keep the function itself. And we'll just put some random stuff in the function. We'll say x equals 10. So what this should do is it should print and uh, another thing, when you call a function with set hook, then it will only give it the parameter of what event was called. So it should say call, and then for this example, it should say call but if you give it the parameter L for line it will give you line and then as a second parameter it will give what line was run when the command was invoked so we're gonna use call so it should just say call uh, I think just once so we'll save it run it and we get call and then nil I think it always tries to give a second parameter but it will be nil unless you give it the line. So I think the reason it's called twice instead of just once, because we only call the f function, is because we also call the i oh, wrong window. Is because we also call the io dot read function at the end of the program. In that in we call the io dot read function before io dot read actually stops the program from executing. So we've called two functions and the hook has printed the fact that two functions were called or it's printed the fact that a function was called twice. So that's what debug.setHook does. So that's all for this tutorial. Uh, hopefully this is a pretty short one. We've had a few long ones recently. This will be a nice break, I hope. But anyway, in the next tutorial, we'll be 
going over the last few functions and concepts that we have to go over. And then after that, it's on to the C library. So get ready for that, and see you in the next tutorial.